There was one community in, in Florida, just 12 miles northeast of, of Fort Myers, which got wiped out. Uh, this community, however, didn't lose a single house and didn't lose power, didn't lose electricity, didn't get flooded. Yeah, well, their streets got flooded. Their houses didn't. There's a story there, too. And right now, their community center and their public school are, you know, sheltering people from nearby Fort Myers and other communities. What's the deal with Babcock Ranch? I'll tell you about that in just a moment. Also, why did Ron DeSantis wait to respond to the hurricane? Well, this is a, a, a question, a hell of a lot of, of Republicans in, in Florida. A lot of people in Florida are now saying, what? He knew on Sunday this was going to hit us this hard, and he waited until Tuesday to issue a man mandatory evacuation order? Finally, how... How far will the Supreme Court have to go before Congress finally says, okay, you guys, that's enough. We're on to your game. No more. We're going to change the dynamic here. Congress has the power to do this. What's it going to take? I have some theories. We'll talk about all those things in the first hour. In the second hour of the program, Michael Cohen is going to drop by. I wanted to talk to him about what it's like being the consigliere for a mob family, basically. I, you know, I find this absolutely fascinating, and I think it's one of the aspects of the whole Trump presidency for which there is not anything close to, the, to an appropriate uh, amount of discussion. We'll talk about that. Also, how OPEC is planning to manipulate our midterms. Yeah, Russia and Saudi Arabia specifically. I'll tell you about that in the second hour of the program. We have evidence. Actually, it's going to happen on Wednesday of this week. I'll tell you all about that in the second hour. And uh, is Liz Truss backing down? She's just said she's going to, you know, postpone her doing away with the top tax bracket in the UK. And uh, the, the markets seem to have responded favorably. But there's a, a few other programs she doesn't seem to be backing down on. Uh, we'll do a deep dive into that in the second hour, at the end of the second hour of the program. Or in the second hour, the second, in the, uh, the second block of the first, uh, of the first half of the, of the second hour. And in our third hour, the Kremlin, Carlson, Fox, Russian back conspiracy loop exposed. This is an amazing story. And I have a geeky science for you. Can hugs save you or heal you from a heart attack? Seriously. It has to do with this magical chemical called oxytocin. But let's start out. Uh, why Bob Babcock Ranch survived Hurricane Ian, but other Florida cities didn't? And this is, this is pretty breathtaking. You know, first of all, you've got this story that uh, Governor DeSantis was informed on Sunday that the hurricane was going to produce this kind of damage, but he waited Sunday, he waited Monday, and finally on Tuesday, he ordered a, an evacuation. And by that point in time, it was too late for most people to get out. And, you know, so now they're finding bodies all over the place. But there's another story, I and mean, that's kind of a sad, not kind of sad, that's a tragic story. Uh, but there's another good news story out of Florida, and it's about this little town 12 miles south, uh, northeast of Fort Myers. Fort Myers, of course, got wiped out. Uh, many dead, total loss of power, total loss of water, other utilities. Uh, but this community came through the hurricane just fine. They never even lost power. What's the deal here? Babcock Farms was started in 2015 as a 100% solar community. They have over 700,000 solar panels that produce so much electricity that this community of 2,000 homes, and that's, you know, the size of a small city, right? Um, this community of 2,000 homes, or the small town anyway, uh, never lost electricity, never lost their lights, and, and they still have plenty of electricity. This, this started in 2015, and the guys who got together to do this, the, the, the people who got together to create Babcock Farms, we're not a bunch of old hippies looking for, you know, hey, let's live off the grid. The solar farm, in fact, that largely powers their community was built by Florida Power and Light in a, in a joint public-private partnership. And this is an area that regularly votes red, vote, votes Republican. They are not save the world hippies. What they are are people who recognize that in, you know, in, in 1970, solar power was $80 a watt. In 2010, it was $6 a watt to install. Uh, the panels were uh, around $2 a watt. And today, solar power uh, costs, excuse me, uh, uh, yeah, it was $6 a, a watt then. 
Um, today it's around $1.40 a watt, and the panels themselves are 38 cents a watt. That's a big drop. Solar and wind are now the cheapest way to produce electricity in the United States, bar none, which is why a quarter million Americans today earn their living designing and maintaining and, and, and installing solar power. And Babcock Ranch did this. Their homes are, you know, have solar roofs. Their community has a giant solar farm. They also, they, they built planning for the flood, which we just got. They built with the, with the, the streets are lower than the houses. You know, typically your house is just a little bit above the street. Well, here they're substantially above the streets. And the streets were designed specifically to flood. They were intended to flood. And thus the streets, you know, drained right into a drainage system that ultimately led back out to the ocean. This is called resilience. And as Florida is looking at the need to uh, either build back hundreds of thousands or at least certainly tens of thousands of homes, perhaps hundreds of thousands, and definitely, you know, build new housing for new pe you know, for people who have been uh, displaced, Florida should be looking at this. Now, this is not a brand new idea, this idea of, you know, solarizing communities. Back in 2009, I was, I was a speaker in Barcelona, Spain along with Hermann Scheer. Hermann Scheer was a member of the German parliament, and he had introduced what was called the 100,000 rooftop pro program. And it was a really simple program. Basically, what the deal was, was the power companies in Germany needed to build a new power plant, but they didn't want to build nuclear power plants because Chernobyl had just melted down, and they, you know, everybody in Germany, this was back in the 80s, everybody in Germany was horrified. And so Hermann Scheer came up with this plan where... If you owned a home, the bank would loan you enough money to solarize your house at a very, very low interest rate. And the banks, these bank loans would be backstopped by the government, so there was no risk to the banks so they could offer a low interest rate. The utility, instead of having to spend hundreds of millions of dollars building a whole new plant, would instead, for the t period of time that you had that loan on your solar roof, would pay you for the electricity you were feeding into the grid enough money to cover your monthly payments. So the utility is basically helping pay people to put solar on their roofs so that they don't have to build into the nuclear power plant. It's actually cheaper than building a power plant. Everybody wins. All the risk is taken by the government, but the government is not having to shell out large quantities of money up front. It's just they're just taking the risk. This is being done by the banks and the utility companies. And sure enough, his 100,000 rooftop program has turned into you know, over a million solar roofs. In fact, they're, they had to upgrade their, their electric grid recently to deal with the, the, this just incredible surge in electricity coming from solar houses. Uh, the, there was a, a couple of weeks this last summer where 100% of the electricity in Germany was provided by this program. 100%. The trains, the, the planes, well, not the planes, the trains, the, the buses, the, the, the subways, the, the trams above ground, everything. We can do this here. In fact, uh, MIT noted that uh, Germany avoided pumping 74 million metric tons of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere just in 2009 and they created 300,000 new jobs. We need to build a resilient America. We need to start with Puerto Rico and Florida, and we can start right now. This is not, this is not rocket science. This is, this is you know, fully modern, fully developed, right here, right now. You can buy it off the shelf technology that every community in America could be using to harden themselves and get off their dependence on their local utility.